For those people that have suffered a mild to moderate uh, traumatic brain injury, it can be, oftentimes be difficult to recover. Uh, what they're due, what's reasonable to compensate them for the brain injury from an insurance company. And the reasons are, are many fold. Uh, first, insurance companies oftentimes get confused over physical reporting to their doctors versus mental reporting. So if they see in a chart note that the person goes back to their prim primary care physician and reports they're feeling really good, uh, no problems uh, whatsoever, oftentimes that line of questioning and those answers come from a physical perspective. For example, a doctor would ask, you know, how's your neck today? How's your back today? Are your shoulders feeling good? Are you able to work uh, or are you able to, to move and lift things uh, as you once did? And if the person says yes, even though they're still having the foggy brain or the difficulty um, with, uh, with cognition, then it gets misinterpreted by the insurance carrier in the chart note where, the, where they look at the chart note and it says the person's back to normal when in fact they're not because they're still having uh, the brain injury symptoms. Other times the insurance companies just like to play games. They say, well, the person looks good, they, they look normal, they appear normal, they, when they speak they sound normal, so therefore a jury's not likely to, to give them much by way of anything because frankly they look like a normal person and why would a jury believe them that they're still having these mental uh, difficulties. Other times, insurance companies will take the position that uh, whatever difficulties the particular patient's having is due to other outside factors. Uh, no joke, I have a case where uh, the insurance carrier is literally claiming that my uh, client's brain injury, which has been verified by neuropsychologists and by brain scans, is due to postmenopausal changes. So, you know, you talk about ridiculous, and it, they get right there into the ridiculous. Uh, other times, uh, jury or excuse me, insurance companies can simply blame it on old age. Uh, we get anyone over the age of uh, 50 or so who has a brain injury. Um, they're getting into their their, their latter years, and particularly in their 60s or 70s. Uh, insurance companies uh, start uh, using words like Alzheimer's uh, or old age. And here we see a gentleman that uh, that looks fairly normal. Uh, he's an older gentleman, uh, looks pleasant, and this is precisely precisely the kind of client that would have a difficulty in recovering his full damages from a brain injury from an insurance company because they're going to look at him and say, well, it looks good. Uh, the jury's going to look at this guy. He looks normal. He's smiling. Uh, if he has any problems, it's probably related to his age because we, we see white hair there and he's clearly up there in years. And so this is the classic kind of client that we have that has difficulty in convincing an insurance company to pay a proper amount relative to their brain injury. And then finally, uh, oftentimes when a person is brain injured, we send them in for what's called a neuropsychological examination, which is performed with a, it's a standardized test uh, that's performed by a neuropsychologist along with a review of their medical records and uh, a, a lengthy interview of the person. And that test is designed to show any cognitive or other defects as a result of brain injury. A lot of times what we hear from insurance companies is, well, we don't have any prior tests to compare it to, so maybe this person always had those problems, notwithstanding the fact that their employers and their friends come in and say they're <laughs> completely different. So we, so we often hear that uh, from insurance carriers and uh, for whatever reason they think it's a good argument. It doesn't usually work out for them too well, but uh, it does give us some grief uh, throughout the process. And then uh, other times we hear the insurance carrier argue that, well, the test is somehow invalid because your client's smart, they understand the testing process, and they can probably fake their way through the test and make it seem worse than it really is. So even highly educated people, uh, doctors, uh, lawyers, uh, uh, teachers, uh, people that are they're well educated, uh, they, you think they, they, it'd be easier to prove that they have a brain injury versus other people. And insurance ca carriers, a lot of times, they just don't buy it, or at least they, they claim they don't buy it because they say, well, that person is so highly educated, they would know how to fake the test. So it's, it's unfortunate, and that's why we're here.